So in the comment section of the last ride along video, um, somebody commented asking my thoughts on the man versus bear thing. And to be completely honest, and this is what I said, I didn't know anything about it, right? So I had to do my Googles and uh, I stumbled upon some TikTok videos, some YouTube videos. And um, I gotta be honest, uh, my initial thoughts were in line with the videos that I was watching from uh, men or male supporting content creators. And then, you know, I did something that I encourage a lot of men to do, which is, you know, talk to women. And thankfully, you know, I have women in my life um, who I expect very sound conversation and logic from, and I, I respect um, their opinion and their views on the world. And um, one of these women and I had a conversation yesterday and she she showed me the error in my thinking, right? So the obvious thinking that most men have is, you know, bears are ferocious creatures and you will die. And women are severely overestimating their ability to navigate a wild animal, and women are also severely overestimating uh, the malevolent nature of men, right? Like women's default assumption is that men are bad. And statistically speaking, that is actually not true. Like most men are regular people. Most people are regular people. Um, and, you know, the idea is, you know, at least I could probably wave my hands and uh, scare the bear off or the bear might not be hungry, but a man is going to assault me. A man is going to uh, potentially do some crazy shit. And I've talked about how it's unfortunate that most people's assumptions of men and particularly black men is negative. But then, you know, you know, she pointed a few things out and I have to say, the people on TikTok are not having or not doing a good enough job articulating the depth of this, of this conversation, which is a deep conversation, right? Um, a lot of the people who are at the forefront of this are the blue haired white women <laughs> who uh, are misandrists and they just look for any reason to vilify or, um, you know, paint men in a bad light. However, she pointed out that, you know, when she was 10, 11, 12, and she newly hit puberty and she had to walk home from school, um, she started receiving cat calls from men. She started receiving threatening uh, uh, messages from men, like, I'll wait here for you, things of that nature, right? And obviously, you know, what I told her was, you know, those men are not reflective of all men. However, when you have conversations with women, they'll tell you that, unfortunately, it's very hard to tell the difference. And unfortunately, you might not always have the agency to put yourself around uh, the good men. So you're left with just men or men that could potentially be one way or the other, right? And then on top of that, when you consider the number of women who have experienced assault at the hands of men, I think the number is like one in four, it, it, it starts kind of making sense why these hyperbolic statements that vilify men are so rampant. And I think that we shouldn't be so quick to be dismissive about what women are trying to say. And, and to my point earlier, they're not saying it properly, right? They, 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 they are saying it in a way where it, it betrays a sense of an overestimation of their ability to navigate a bear. But the best rebuttal that I've heard or the best rationale that I've heard is, you know, the worst thing a bear can do is kill me. But a human being, a man in this case, can potentially do much worse. And I think when you think about it through that lens of 
there are some things worse than death, I think then, okay, now we can have a more robust, a more insightful, a more rational conversation. And I don't think that's being done on either side. So, you know, since the conversation I had with my female friend, I'm still kind of reeling and trying to wrap my head around my thoughts. But I encourage us when we hear certain things and similar to women, when you hear certain complaints from men about the female delegation, don't be so quick to dismiss it. Try to consider some factors that might be legitimate in their argument. Right. I know, you know, as a as a father of a girl, uh, despite my knowledge that most men are good people, um, I'm still going to teach her to not dress a certain way in certain environments, to not be overly trusting of people, because as a as a man, I default to the assumption that uh, things are bad and things could potentially get worse. And that's where my provide and protect comes in. Right. I say it all the time, like men teach children how to survive, whereas women teach children why to survive, meaning that men's um, role is very utilitarian. Right. This is how you hunt for your food. This is how you skin the food. This is how you you know, this is how you survive. And part of survival is understanding the reality of things and understanding that the the reality is not always pretty, right? Like we tell, you know, we tell women all the time that they are physically inferior to men. I think this is a testament to that. And it's also one of my critiques of the blue haired feminists, because they're essentially in this conversation, they're essentially admitting that, yeah, men are physically superior. And because of men's physical superiority, I'm afraid, right? So on their side, they've got to pick an an, an argument, right? Are they afraid of men because men are physically superior? And because of that and our sadistic nature, whatever the case may be, could potentially inflict more harm than a bear. Or are we physically, intellectually, all that good stuff equal to men, which negates the, uh, the fear of a man versus a bear. So I think both sides need to uh, recalibrate uh, some of our arguments. But like I said, my message is, you know, don't be so dismissive. There's usually a point behind certain things, despite if the people making the point can properly articulate it. Right. And, And similar, like I've said to the manosphere, there are a lot of grievances that men have towards women that aren't properly articulated. And unfortunately, because of that, women become dismissive of those points. And sometimes, even when the points are very well articulated, women are still dismissive. We do that as well. Right, we do that as well. And unfortunately, relative to women, I think we've done that historically which has created this female lash of like, you know, solipsistic dismissiveness of like men don't have anything of value to say. And in this sense, I'm talking specifically about uh, our women, black women, because white women, they got a whole, (laughs) they've got a whole other situation going on with their men. But yeah, um, comment your thoughts below. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, Hit the like button, support the channel. Let me know what you want me to talk about next. I might do a video on Kedrick and uh, Drake. (laughs) I I have some thoughts on that. But um, yeah, uh, comment your thoughts, subscribe, like, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.